Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, I know it's been about six months since I did my last one, and I finally had some time on my hands to do a tutorial, so I thought, hey, why not? So today I'm going to show you a tutorial on GIMP instead of Blender, and what we'll be doing today is combining these two images. Uh, the end result should be something like this, and if uh, it took me quite a while to actually create this because I like to fine tune a lot of things. Um, so without any further ado, let's get started. Open up GIMP, and your GIMP probably will not look like this. This is a theme I downloaded. And what we'll do is we'll just insert, just drag and drop the background image. And the next one we'll do is just uh, click File, Open as Layers, go to the Wolf, click Open, and simple as that, there it is. So now what we'll do is we'll hold down Control, use a scroll wheel, and zoom in on the wolf and we need to take out the background now the crop tool is what you'd probably think about using except it only does square selections as far as I know so what we're going to do is actually use the uh, free select or you can use fuzzy select as well although fuzzy select will select whole regions which is not something we need so we'll go free select and what we'll do is we'll just go around the wolf. Uh, I won't be too picky about where I do that, although I, I suggest you would be. And basically, we'll just go around the wolf here, his head, and uh, just select where he is. And basically, what we'll do is because the free select tool only selects things, uh, basically, we'll just take the selection, cut it, and paste it and it'll have the same effect as uh, basically cropping it but in a, a uh, actual dimensions you want uh, which you know if that doesn't make sense uh, it will in a minute so just go around the wolf head uh, also if uh, my voice might sound different that's because I actually have a different microphone uh, which I might actually do a your view on. It's a very, very nice microphone. It's the Rode NT USB. Uh, before, I used to use the Blue Nessie, which for the time being it was good. Uh, but I want something a bit higher end. And this is more of a studio grade, they say, which uh, means it's very high quality, especially because it's a Rode project. And Rode has been known to make very, very good products. All right. Anyway, now that we have the wolf head done, what we'll do is just hit Control X, and then we'll do a new layer. Just click OK unless you wish to name the layer. Control V, and there you have it. Then what we'll do is to new layer, delete this one. Uh, the only reason I created a new layer was because sometimes it messes up and you're not quite able to paste to a new layer. <coughs> Pardon me. So basically, there we go we have the wolf head and we can also expand this by using this scale tool clicking on the image and if we grab a corner and hold down control it makes sure that it's a linear uh, scaling this way it's not longer in the y direction than it is the x or vice versa and something else that I would like to do is actually just uh, take this background here go layer transform and flip it on the horizontal this way it balances out the composition a bit more. Now we'll take the grab tool and just move this wolf out of the way here. Uh, maybe I scaled it a bit too much. I'll just select it again. Scale it down to about there. Select the grab tool again. So shortcut is M for the grab tool. And I think I'll move the wolf right about right there. Now as you can see, it doesn't fit that nicely with this. So what we'll do is we'll take the what's called pasted layer, which we can actually just quickly rename by edit layer attributes. And we'll just call this uh, wolf head. And if you want, you can actually delete this layer here. But I'll just keep it there just for uh, just because. So what we'll do is we'll take the wolf head and we're going to change the layer mode. And this basically gives it a different effect. So for example, right now it's on normal. But if you go go to divide, 
it divides the two colors and as you can see has some of the purple some of the red and whatnot for this one I actually want to go screen and in case you can't you haven't seen it there this is normal and this is screen basically it takes down some of the transparency of the wolf which you can even do through the opacity but this makes it the wolf basically disappear more so let's say 80 percent it does create some transparency as you can see right here probably but we're going to leave that at a hundred and just go uh, screen this way some of the red comes through and the colors look more balanced so next what we'll do is we'll actually take and do a layer mask on the wolf this way it doesn't have those very hard edges that um, the kind of distract from the purpose of this so what we'll do is we'll go to these little brushes here and we'll select one of these ones that are kind of spongy then we'll go back to here right click and there should be a add layer mask so we can click that and uh, just click add should be alright and then when you go to draw and you draw onto this uh, let's increase the size to say 50 and it's a bit much so what we'll do is we'll take the opacity drop it down to say 65 and you can kind of just round off the edges uh, maybe that's even a bit too much you know what? what I'll do is actually I will find that layer mask let's go to layer add the layer mask to the selection and now you can okay here we go sorry I made a mistake so add a layer mask to the selection and it should work a bit better uh, it kind of given the same effect but we will fix that later so let's just drop this down to 45 because it's, it take, it's taking a bit much off Uh, we'll increase the size of the brush to about 80 and we'll also change the brush type to something a bit more spongy there see so if we can just uh, increase the size of this there we go this is the brush I was looking for and this kind of just gives it a uh, rounded off effect so it kind of looks like it belongs more rather than having those sharp edges alright so now if we select that we're going to go to colors and there should be a curves button there and basically what this will do is it will allow us to change the highs and lows of each individual channel. So down here is your ultimate black color, up here is your ultimate white. So basically if you took this up it would take the blacks to white. If you took it this way it would do the same and as you might guess this would take it darker depending on which way you move the curve. So as you can see it can create varying effects depending on what you wish to have. So I'm actually going to darken this by taking a new point, which you can just click to create SO, and dragging it down to where the black is. And then we'll go to the blue channel, and as you probably have guessed, this only affects the blue colors. So if we took it down, it'd be less blue and more yellow. If we took this up, it would increase the blues. So I'm actually going to take it just a smidge to the right there. As you can see, it does have a slight effect, but not too much. And then we'll just take down a little bit of the greens to kind of create a glowing wolf, right? If you took it this way, it'd be more green, took it down, be more purple. So it's just very 
very slightly. And I'll do a little bit with the red channel as well. Because there's going to be a lot of red coming through already with the uh, background image. Let's click OK. Now we'll go to the background there and do the same thing real quick. Uh, I'm going to start with the red channel this time though. Which seems to still be affecting the wolf head. You know, I'll do this here real quick. New layer from visible. Okay, so it seems that we still have this here selected. And I'm not sure why. Now, here we go. Just use fuzz select and select outside of the border, and you should be all right. All right, so we'll select the background again. Go to colors and curves. And then you should be able to go ahead and edit it. See, I'll increase the blacks a bit, do some highlights, go down to the red channel. You can really, really increase the fire in it by just increasing the red just slightly. And then to make it really stand out, we use a bit more blacks. And that should be all right for this channel. Now let's go back to the wolf head, and you can see that it stands out a bit more now. So what we'll do is we'll just go color threshold. You can see right away it goes black and white. Uh, but we want, what we want to do is actually uh, Oh, sorry, wrong tool. <laughs> that one is for um, going straight black to white thresholds. I believe it was the levels that we need. Yes. Here we are, and now you can see it kind of adds to the image. It uh, You can make it blend in a bit nicer so it, it matches the highlights and the mid lights, the low lights, and all this. And then we'll say OK, and uh, I think that looks all right. Um, so that's basically, you know, that's just the basics. And if you wish to export, just go file, export. Because uh, if you if you use save as, it'll save as a GIMP image instead of an image. Uh, and a GIMP image or a GIMP file basically allows you to edit the layers and whatnot. Whereas an actual image, such as PNG or JPEG, uh, allows you to actually view the image. So uh, that's basically it. Have fun editing. Take your time on this. I kind of rushed through it, but... Uh, I urge you to uh, you know, go through it and to actually take your time to actually get the final effect you're looking for. I'd probably spend another hour just to make sure this actually is composed as a single image because right now it still looks a bit off. But there's multiple ways to do it and you'll probably find a different way than I do. So uh, best of luck and uh, yeah, have fun.